functions to solve trig equations. You know what's cool about inverse functions in general is that they can be considered functions in their own right, but they can also be used to help us solve equations because, as we remember, inverses of functions undo what a function does. So, for example, if I have a function, an exponential function, right, and uh, it's inverse, let's say, I'll call that f negative 1 of x, even though I don't like that notation. Just a reminder, that's not an exponent, that's just notation that means inverse. The inverse of that exponential growth would be a log with base 2, right? So those are inverses of each other. They're both functions. I can think of this inverse as a function in its own right and model things in the world like earthquakes and other things using that function. But I can also use logs to solve exponential equations, right? So for example, if I had 2 to the x equals 11 and I wanted to solve for x, I would use the inverse operation of exponents, which is logarithm, right? And I could say, oh, log base 2 11 of 11 equals x and solve that, right? So we can use inverse operations to solve equations. Isn't that fun? So we're going to do that with our trig inverse functions. So we have inverse sine, which I like using arc sine because it avoids that bad notation. Inverse cosine, which again, arc cosine is another way. People don't like my R's. I'll try to make that more clear. That's an arc. And then inverse tan, which arc tan is what I will use from now on, because again, that is not an exponent, it's just notation that means inverse. How are we? Shall we solve some equations? Let's do it. So whenever I solve a trig equation, you have to be given a domain, because these sinusoidal graphs, sine and cosine, of course, go on and on forever, so they're going to have an infinite number of solutions. So unless you have an infinite amount of time to solve, you're not going to be able to solve them. Okay, so let's say I have this equation and I want to solve for, say, for a theta. Sine of theta equals two-fifths. All right, two-fifths is not one of those nice ratios that I know that's on my unit circle, right? So I'm going to have to do some work. And it's going to involve either using a sine chart, right, or a piece of technology, our graphing calculator, which is programmed to have all of the angles that will give me a ratio of two-fifths. So let's just remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse or in the unit circle. It's the y value over the rotating arm, right? So sine is positive when y is positive. So that's in my first quadrant. So one angle will terminate in the first quadrant. I can make a little reference triangle. And the other time sine is positive is in the second quadrant. So I'm going to have two possible answers one rotation that ends there, and the second rotation that ends there in this domain. All right? So what I need to find is this little reference angle right here. I need to find that little reference angle so that I can figure out how far I rotate. That's where the calculator is going to come in handy. So I'm going to take the inverse of that sign. So I'm undoing the sign by taking the inverse. So you can do this a couple of ways. You can either say, okay, I'm taking the inverse sign, or arc sign, of both sides. Of course, the inverse sign of a sign, those undo each other, they're inverses. So you just are left with theta equals sine to the negative one of two fifths, right? 
I guess I said earlier I wasn't going to use that notation. <laughs> so let's say arc sine instead of sine negative 1. But again, it doesn't matter what notation you like. I will use this notation. Now, you don't have to go through this step here. You can just say, OK, in my original function, that's my angle. And this is my ratio. So of course, in my inverse, the input becomes the output, and the output becomes the input. So my output is my angle, and my input is my ratio. So I'm saying, what angle or angles have a sine of 2 fifths? Well, let's ask our calculator to help us find an answer, or at least to give us information that will help us find the answer. So I'm going to make sure I'm in radian mode. This thing tells me I'm looking for radians. So there we go. Second sine 2 fifths. Enter. And I get this decimal. I'm going to do little squigglies because, of course, this is an irrational number that goes on and on forever. Boom, boom, boom. This is my reference angle, it looks like, from my picture. So I'm just going to put that 0.4115 there, 0.4115 there, 0.4115 there. And now I think I have enough information to find my two answers in this domain. So my first rotation is 0.4115 radians. That's one of my answers. That's one of my answers. Well, that wasn't too bad. I'm going to put my answer here. So, and you always have to be told what to round to in this situation. Let's round to the nearest thousandths, three place. So that's going to be 0.412 radians approximately. Now, how do I get this? Well, I'm rotated into the second quadrant. So you are not quite at pi radians. You're a little shy of pi radians. So to find this, I'm going to do pi radians, which would have been this whole thing, minus 0.4. 1, 1, 5. Now, of course, I don't want to round until the end, so I'm just going to use that actual decimal in my calculator. I'm going to do pi minus that full answer, and then I'm only going to round at the very end, 2.730. So my two answers are pi equals 0.412 radians or 2.730 radians. Those would be my solutions. Now, of course, you could check. You could plug those in, take the sign, and see if you get two fifths. Of course, you're rounding these off. So you're not going to get exactly two fifths, right? Even small rounding things, um, particularly when you're doing a trig function, will affect your answer. But there you go. We just solved this angle using arc sine or inverse sine. Now, some people say, well, that doesn't look like an angle. So just always keep in mind 0.4 radians. Remember, one radian is the length of one radius measured along the circle. So one radian is like that much. So this is a little less than half of a radian. That makes sense. For this, remember, three radians is almost 3.14159, right? This is pi radians, so 3 radians is going to be here. So 2.7 radians is going to be in that second quadrant. So just try to get your brain used to the radian measurements. All right, there we have it. A man walks down the street.